After a long and very difficult house move, my family and I are now moved into our new home, which includes a double garage that was perfect for converting into an awesome garage gym. Now, I've watched plenty of home gym conversion videos and they're all quite similar. You've got time lapses of carriages being cleaned and another time lapse of walls being painted. So you definitely don't need to see that again. So I'm gonna show you how I did everything, exactly what I used, and most importantly, how much everything cost. And spoiler alert, it's probably not as expensive as you might think. The first step was preparing the garage. Now, when you move house, the garage basically becomes a dumping ground. So the first step was tidying up as much as possible, finding a home for everything that doesn't really need to be in a garage, and ultimately trying to free up as much space as possible. I also invested in a really cheap bike rack to put the kids' bikes on the garage door and out of the way. This was a Peruso cycle storage mount from Amazon that cost about £23. Next, it was cleaning and preparing surfaces ready for painting. A lot of people try to skip this step because it sucks and they want to get straight into the painting. But the more time you spend doing this, the better everything will look and your paint will have a greater bond with the surfaces. I spent a lot of time removing grease stains from the floor, as well as scraping off bits of loose mortar from the walls and rough surfaces from the floor. It was then just lots of sweeping and mopping to get rid of as much dust and dirt as possible. The next step was then painting the walls, and I knew that I wanted black walls for the look I had in mind. Now I'd spent months painting and decorating my old house, so I felt like I knew what I was doing. But painting breeze blocks is very different to painting nice, smooth, plastered walls. As such, I massively underestimated how much paint I was going to need due to the deep textures of the surface. I was also using standard rollers and brushes, which aren't really fit for the job. After three coats, there was still a lot of breeze blocks showing through, so I bought a proper masonry set of brushes and rollers, which have a much longer pile. This helped a lot, but used considerably more paint than the standard rollers. In the end, I was left with a surface that was just about acceptable with a few speckles showing through that I could live with. In hindsight, because the texture of the breeze box was so deep, I really should have used a paint sprayer. This would have provided much better coverage. Now, there are three walls to my garage because the garage doors are where the fourth wall would be. And I decided to have two black walls and one white wall to provide a little bit more light. I was much less fussy about the application of the white walls and I actually painted this wall after painting the floor just because of how I had all the contents of the garage stacked at one side. When it came to preparing the floor, I researched a lot of different solutions including epoxy resins and all different types of paint. I found a really good heavy duty paint from Amazon for £48 which I was really pleased with. Now this was a solvent based paint that had very, very strong fumes, so I had to paint in 15 minutes bursts, wearing a mask with the doors wide open to air the garage out. Again, because the garage still had lots of contents, I had to paint two thirds of the floor, wait for it to dry, then move everything over to paint the remaining floor. Now this was supposed to be touch dry in one to two hours. However, maybe I applied it too thick because it took eight hours before it was dry enough to move things across. But when it was finished, it looked great and it really did change the whole look of the garage. And of course, it means that the surface is now sealed and protected. So at this stage, I had ordered the mats and the gym equipment and scheduled them to arrive a few days apart. While I was waiting, I decided to add the entertainment to the gym. We had an old 26 inch TV and a TV bracket, which wasn't really being used. So I mounted this onto the wall and we then bought a really cheap Amazon Fire Stick. Now, I've set up a really good Wi-Fi network in the house because I work from home. So the Wi-Fi signal in the garage is already pretty good. So the Fire Stick can be used for playing music, playing YouTube videos, and even watching films and TV shows on Netflix while doing cardio on the bike. So it's a really simple way of adding some atmosphere and some entertainment. Now I spent a huge amount of time researching the best gym flooring. Initially, I quite naively assumed that some cheap EVA foam flooring would do the trick and priced up some decent coverage from a seller on Amazon for about £150. However, I very quickly realized that they weren't going to be suitable and really were unlikely to last long. 
So I looked at lots of different options, trying to find the best value solution. I looked at gym rubber matting rolls, garage mats, stable mats, and just tons of different mat brands. Eventually, I found a company called Canons UK. Now these guys had brilliantly priced products and free delivery. So I was able to get 20 one meter by one meter commercial grade mats for 580 pounds. That's equivalent to 29 pounds each. Now most other companies were charging 40 to 50 pounds per mat plus delivery. So I was really, really pleased to find this deal. The mats are 20 millimeters thick, uh, made of solid rubber and probably weigh about 20 kilograms each. Fitting them was easy. I just placed them on the garage floor and the combination of the grip and the weight of the mats means there's really no movement in them at all. The biggest expense with building your own home gym is always going to be the equipment. I'm not going to talk through every piece of equipment that I bought, although I have listed them all in the description below, but there are a few key decisions I made that I thought might be useful for people to know. First of all, pretty much all the equipment I bought came from Mirafit. I have to say I'm super impressed by the quality of everything that I bought and what great value they were. Now my garage has a ceiling height of 220 centimeters, which is pretty good, but most garage ceilings are a lot higher, typically closer to 240 or 250 centimeters. And that extra 20 to 30 centimeters makes a really big difference. For example, at the shorter height, I can't do a standing barbell press without actually hitting the ceiling. Now a standard power rack would fit in my garage, but there'd be no clearance above it for doing pull-ups, for example. So Mirafit has a short version of their M200 power rack called the M200S. This is six foot high, so it leaves plenty of space for pull-ups. And I actually replaced the standard pull-up bar with a multi-grip pull-up bar, as this provided extra space for me to walk under without hitting my head. Because of the height issue, I also bought a landmine and a Viking press, so I could still do a lot of standing pressing movements without needing to sit down. This actually is one of the best pieces of equipment I've ever bought and is doing absolute wonders for my shoulders. So I already had a pretty good bench, but I ended up buying one with a leg developer for leg extensions and leg curls. I chose this particular one because it was 60 kilogram weighted, which is heavier than most unless you buy a specific leg extension machine. The cable machines at Mirafit are also really great value and add a lot of versatility to the home gym setup. This is great for all the rowing and pulling movements, as well as curls and tricep pushdowns. I also got a free standing punch bag. Now normally I would only ever use a wall mounted heavy bag, but I wanted something that I could easily move around depending on what I was doing. I'm actually really impressed with this bag and I might do a review on it separately. The biggest indulgence was the dumbbell rack. Now I already had a set of selectable dumbbells that served me extremely well during lockdown, going from five to 32.5 kilograms. And I could have continued to use them, but they can be quite clunky. And I was always worried about dropping them and breaking them. So having some nice rubber hex dumbbells is really nice. If you're interested, this is a complete list of everything I bought and the cost. You can spend a lot of money on getting decent gym mirrors and having them professionally installed. I was tempted to get it done properly, but I found a really good value mirror from Amazon for just 38 pounds. Now drilling breeze blocks is not easy, as I discovered when drilling in the TV brackets, the storage and the cable machine. If the placement of the plugs ended up being slightly off, I was able to get away with this to a degree by just wrenching the bolts through the thread. Of course, if I tried doing this with a mirror, it was highly likely to break. So I decided to use some mirror glue. There was some really strong mirror adhesive called Stixol for just six pound a tube, which worked really, really well. And before attaching the mirror, I did attach a small wooden ledge to take the weight of the mirror, which I thought might add some more support. Again, in hindsight, I probably should have made a quick wooden frame and then screwed the mirror to the wooden frame. But the glue and the ledge have worked just fine. So when I first envisioned how I wanted the gym to look, I knew I wanted to include the LED lights. I think they look super cool and they really do make a big difference for a relatively small investment. Now I've seen a lot of home gyms that use LED strips, but they can look a little bit mm, unattractive. In most cases, this is because the LED strips are cheap and have just been stuck directly onto the wall, which shows all the individual LEDs, which in my opinion, 
isn't it great look? So the first thing I looked for was the LED strip density. Cheap strips have 30 LEDs per meter, so I went for the 60 LEDs per meter. Additionally, I bought some aluminium channels with diffusers to make them look like a solid strip. In a lot of cases, I was able to fix the channels using some leftover stick saw adhesive, but in other places I had to drill in some plugs into the wall and screw them in. Finally, the LED strips had an RGB controller, so I can change the colour depending on my mood, or even have it in different disco modes if I really overdo the pre-workout. So for the final finishing touch, I considered adding in some more mirrors above the dumbbells, but I decided that this is my gym, maybe there's an opportunity to have a bit more personalization. Now anyone that knows me will know that I love my superheroes, so the idea of having Batman painted onto my wall just seemed like a great idea. I got some quotes from some local artists and showed them the type of thing that I had in mind. Their costs range between 500 to 1,000 pounds, which although I'm sure is a fair cost, it seemed a lot in the context of my home gym for a finishing touch. You can buy a lot of equipment for 500 to 1,000 pounds. So I decided to try it for myself first, and I thought I could always paint over it again if I really, really messed it up. So I found artwork online and photoshopped it to the size of how I wanted it, made a few small refinements and simplifications, and added a cool quote to go alongside it. I knew that I didn't have the talent to paint this freehand, so I initially looked at making like a large stencil. However, I decided a quicker and better option might be to use a projector. So using my laptop and a cheap projector that I borrowed, I was able to project the artwork onto the wall via a HDMI cable from my laptop, and then using some artist brushes, I then just traced around it as best as I could, and it came out far better than I ever expected. The artists estimated one to two days of work, but using this method, I did it in just three hours, and I'm sure their result would have been much better but I'm really impressed at how it came out and it saved me between 500 to 1,000 pounds. So the cost for the setup of the gym is really 918 pound 50, which is everything except for the actual equipment. Now I could have bought some minimal equipment up front, such as the power rack and the weights, and then just bought a few new bits every month, as well as skipping on some of the real indulgences like the dumbbell rack. But I wanted to get set up straight away and just enjoy having a really awesome home gym, particularly after a long absence due to the pandemic. If there is anything you want more information on, let me know in the comments and links to all the products are in the description where possible. If you enjoyed this video, then check out some of the other great content on this channel.